and then I use a fabric script to provision it as a web server. This installs Chef and then goes and provisions it using a particular server template. Um, elapsed time to, boot a, to bring up and boot a new machine, somewhere on the order of three to five minutes, depending on how long that machine actually physically takes to boot. Uh, if I'm doing this on Amazon, it's a little longer. If I'm doing it on Rackspace, they actually keep a bunch of hot instances around so they can reprovision and hand them off to you so it can go a little faster, but whatever, three or five minutes I can have a new server installed. I don't think you can even get past the phone tree when you call Dell in that time. This is, this is a really, really big deal. I, I, don't think I, can, I don't think I can undersell how much this ability changes the game. Being able to dynamically provision and decommission servers on demand as needed Com completely fractures apart and changes everything we think we know about deployment. Um, and and I, I want to point out that you don't necessarily need to buy into one of these, you know, prepackaged platforms. I, you know, I know people in the healthcare world where HIPAA compliance basically rules out doing anything on Amazon or, or Rackspace. There's actually I don't know a lawyer who tells me that's not true, but whatever. Let's pretend that it, let's not get into that. The, the point is there are companies that, for whatever reason, just can't use this stuff. But, but there's, there are local versions of it. VMware would love to sell you some really great products that let you do your own API-based virtualization in your stack. In the open source world, there's Eucalyptus, which is an open source clone of the EC2 and, and, um, and S3. Uh, stuff. Uh, Rackspace is, is open sourcing all their code and doing this, it's being co developed with NASA, something called OpenStack. I don't know a lot about it. And then just yesterday, VMware announced this thing they're calling Open PAAS, Open Platform as a Service. It's the worst name ever. I hope they come up with something better for it. But it sounds kind of like a meta app engine, like a build your own platform specific deployment thing and you can run it on on VMware or you can run it on your own hardware or you can run it on EC2 so there's a lot of stuff happening in this world you don't necessarily need to be using Amazon or Rackspace in order to be doing you know cloud deployment and the thing is that the types of things you can do when you have when you can spin up a new machine in a couple of seconds and spin down a new machine in a couple of seconds, that's another really important one, um, is really fantastic, right? Think about self-scaling infrastructure. Um, you guys know SmugMug? They're a photo sharing site. Um, Flickr, think Flickr, but kind of more oriented towards professionals, a lot more private photos. Uh, my mom's a psychoanalyst who does a lot of um, uh, what's called sand play therapy and it, she takes a lot of pictures of what the kid she's working with does and she needs to be able to post them somewhere online to share with the other members of her practice but privacy issues mean that has to be really locked down so smug mug serves those types of people very well um, they know because they have a lot of professional photographers they tend to get a lot of uploads late in the day right so they've seen their traffic spikes they dynamically bring up some new servers about five in the afternoon maybe and spin them down at midnight, right? I mean, how cool is that, right? Your, your server room grows when your traffic grows. And that's just sort of the most basic. I mean, you can, uh, Amazon has APIs for actually doing reactive scaling. When the, average, when the average load on all of these machines reaches X, start bringing up some new ones. Some really amazing things you can do with that. You know, we had this idea of, scraping, um, you know, FARC and Slashdot and Reddit and all those sites. And as soon as you see a link to your site on one of those social sites, start bringing up some new servers just in case, right? There's a, just so many great ideas of here's this, this, this software that appears smart. It's reacting before you can even do anything about it. Or what about self-healing infrastructure? One of my favorite things about configuration management tools, Chef, Puppet, what have you, is that if somebody logs into the server and changes something directly, Chef quietly changes it back. Someone changes an Etsy file, Chef goes, no, don't, don't do that. It's supposed to be this way. So your infrastructure actually heals itself. So
So how, why not continuous provisioning? Every time I make a change to my Apache conf, spin up a new server and try it. It's going to cost me a cent. Why not? Uh, I'll also share the way that I do server upgrades. Uh, I haven't, since I started using cloud computing, I, I haven't done a dist upgrade. Because why bother? It takes too long. Just spin up a new machine, provision it, and shut down the old one. Right? I, I even, I've been known to, to uh, if something goes wrong on a server, just bring up a new one. I, I don't really need to figure out what, what went wrong. If it happens again, maybe then I need to figure it out. But sort of this, you know, this idea of impatience. We, we shouldn't have to wait to do these sorts of, you know, to do these sorts of repetitive upgrade type tasks when it's easier just to bring up a new machine. Now I do want to mention that a real key to this is, is monitoring. You, you, need, you need good monitoring tools. And um, I have no recommendations here. I, I use Nagios and I hate it. Um, and the problem is I hate everything else more. So find a, find a monitoring tool you don't completely despise and learn how to use it really, really well. Um, the key here is you can't just stop once you're getting messages sent to your cell phone, right? That's like, you know, that's the intro, that's step one. You know you have a good monitoring stack when your monitoring tool is, is reacting for you, is noticing that, you know, so I have, a, I have a Nagios task that monitors the backlog of my celery queue, right? If I get a text message from that, it's just going to wake me up. Better it would be if Nagio spins up a new queue worker machine to start taking care of that backlog. That's the sort of thing I'm talking about. Don't, don't be satisfied with knowing when something broke. Try to figure out how to script it so that you can just fix it automatically. And then you know, send you an email in the morning. Last night there was a problem and I fixed it while you were asleep. When you're a consultant, sending emails like that to your clients is just like, it's like gold. They love that stuff. So if you figure out how to make your tools do it for you automatically, even better. The other aspect of impatience is that I think you should choose your tools impatiently. Um, we, shouldn't, we shouldn't accept flawed software. We, we shouldn't get ourselves into a situation, and I just complained about monitoring, so this is clearly one of those places, but we shouldn't get ourselves somewhere where we're stuck with something we don't like. Don't... Um, you know, you, you, you know this rule, right? This is Fred Brooks, no silver bullet, right? There, there, there is no perfect tool. I love Chef. Some of you are going to try it out, and you're just going to hate it. That's totally great, right? Choose tools impatiently. Don't put up with something that, that you don't like. Um, let me give you an example. You know, uh, one of the reasons that I think that Python is such a good place to be right now is we have this plethora of great deployment options, great WSGI servers. We, we don't have to put up with just one option because we have a lot of really good ones, right? We've got, you know, Apache Mod Whiskey, which is kind of old faithful, right? This tool works all the time. It's what most people use. Maybe it's getting a little long in the tooth. Some, some of the new kids are a little bit hotter, but we, you know, we know this one works. It's, it's, there, it's there to fall back on. There's the Gunicorn, which is the new, the new shiny. Um, this is a port into Python of a library called Unicorn, written for Ruby. It's an um, event-based, non-blocking, um, highly concurrent, very functional <laughs> uh, sort of thing for Python. Um, new, shiny, maybe a little bit experimental. It's Cherry Pie, which is funny because most people haven't heard of Cherry Pie, but it's been around, it predates WSGI by a long time. Um, calling this the everything, everything old is new again tool. Um, Cherry Pie is threaded, not evented, um, which I guess, I guess threading isn't cool now, is that? I don't know. I have trouble keeping track, but I guess threading's not cool right now and eventing is. But um, if you're uncool like me, threading works really well. I know a guy who's doing roughly 10 million hits a day on a single server served through Cherry Pie, so it's, uh, it, it can handle it. Um, and you know, you've got other things like uWSGI, you know, maybe, maybe a dark horse. Um, kind of coming from behind. And what's, what's really great about a standard like WSGI is that I can and have switched between these you know, on, a mom, on a moment's notice. You see that you know, Apache's doing something weird. Well, why don't you try Gunicorn on one of your web servers? You know, put a point to portion of traffic at it and sort of see how it behaves next to other things. Um, 
I wouldn't consider entering into a space that didn't have this sort of um, this sort of depth, this sort of choice.